Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Buzz 101 here at the Kutztown Small Business Development Center. What is Buzz 101, you may be asking? We, uh, we Peter Hornberger and I, will be discussing uh, relevant social media topics that pertain to small businesses and, and just in general how social media kind of um, uh, molds the way we think about things. Um, so, who is we exactly, Peter? Why don't you go introduce sure. yourself? Uh, I'm Peter Hornberg. I work here at the Small Business Development Center at Kutztown University as the online marketing specialist. And uh, I'm here basically to uh, uh, help businesses work through online marketing and social media issues as they may come. And uh, I'm the government marketing specialist here at the Kutztown SBDC, meaning I help uh, small businesses market to local, state, and federal government. But I also give uh, a social media workshop uh, every so often as well. And and uh, by no means are Peter and I uh, social media gurus or, or experts, really. I think uh, the whole point of this is we're, we're just interested in seeing how social media kind of molds our, molds our world and, and, and the business mindset and the potential benefit or, or negative of social media. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the purpose of the show, Buzz 101, is really to bring you quick, current topics that we're going to discuss. By no means are we going to, to come to conclusions, but it's hopefully at the end of the half hour that we're here with you today, you have something that's going to give you um, some new insight in how you manage your social media and online marketing for your small business. So, um, with that, we'll right. start digging yeah, into some and the, topics. And the, the one-on-one, folks, 101 seconds is how long we are going to speak about each topic. So, literally, we're just we're just scratching the surface. But uh, now, Peter, let's get started with our uh, with our first article. Okay. Um, this was an article I found. It was it was talking about the the human part of social media, and it used a couple of large companies as as an example. Um, I, the writer of the article had a, a stayed at both the, the Marriott and the Hilton um, uh, hotels. And uh, at one point, uh, when she was staying at the Marriott, she had a, uh, a bad experience in that she did not get the room that she wanted. So what she did was she, she tweeted the Marriott. Within five to ten minutes, they got a response from the Marriott apologizing. And she said just a little bit later that day, she got a, a call from the general manager of the hotel um, asking about her um, her experience and how, how they can make it better, how they can improve. Contrary, uh, U.S. Airlines, I mean, they're struggling. Airlines are struggling in general, I mean, to add this to it. Um, U.S. Airlines, uh, she tweeted, uh, she had a, a poor experience with the uh, U.S. Airlines. Uh, I forget what, exactly what her, her issue was, but she tweeted it, and within two seconds she got a response because it was an automated reply from U.S. Airlines saying, oh, within 24 to 48 hours, we will direct message you um, Eleven days later, she got a response from from U.S. Airlines. <laughs> so uh, we we Peter, just talk about you know, uh, especially in Twitter in general. You know, we have those two examples, but for maybe a small business in general, what what's the takeaway here? I, yeah, I, I, again, I think the the takeaway is people aren't necessarily interacting with brands; they're acting with the people behind the brands. And um, you know, as we talk with a lot of small businesses and, and even some fairly large businesses. The topic of social media and online marketing comes up all the time, and, and one of the things that people always want is they always they always want an intern to do this. They always want someone else that mm -hmm. they can they uh, basically not pay to come in and basically take over the voice of that organization. And what you're talking about makes me think about the, the criticality of whoever is um, using these channels. Their voice has to be consistent with that brand because people want to 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 be talking to someone, not mm -hmm. to some machine. So I, I think it is very critical when you're thinking about doing this um, that you have in mind the voice and, and how people might take that, that, that communication. Yeah, a perfect example. I'm, I'm no, by no means a good cook. Um, and so I, I, I found about these box services that, yeah. that package food, and all I have to do is pretty much cook it up. <laughs> it's like Hungry Man, or Hungry Man plus one. There you go. Um, so I, I tweeted both uh, plated and blue, blue apron. Right, and within again ten minutes, both of them replied to me. One gave me a discount. Another one said, "You know, we'd love to have your business." That's just uh, to me. That's just good business. And again, it's the human part of business, not some electronic thing. Yeah, and, and I, I talk about this a lot when we do things like our, our website uh, reviews and things. That websites and social media they, they don't draw energy and, and, and communication in and of themselves. You still have to go out and do the work, right? and, and that's where I think this human part comes back yeah, in. Yeah, no, great point. Good. That, that's one on one. That's all. That's all the time we get for these things. So um, that's going to be the theme of the show as we go. But uh, I want to kind of keep on this this airline theme. Um, they, they do a lot of tweeting, a lot of, of, of social media as well. Um, but with the World Cup going on currently, 
Um, there's been a couple of, of articles that have come out about some, um, we'll call it social media gone wrong, featuring some airline tweets. And uh, um, in one of the opening round uh, games, uh, there, was, there was a game between the United States and Ghana. And uh, the United States won that game, won nothing. And um, uh, Delta Airlines actually put out a tweet to all of their followers uh, with, with the score, basically congratulating the United States on their, on their victory. Um, they represented the United States in that, that tweet with a picture of the Statue of Liberty, fairly iconic for us. Uh, for Ghana, they used a, a giraffe. Um, unfortunately, apparently, there are no actual giraffes uh, in Ghana. Uh, no more than there are yeah. here in zoos, uh, there aren't. Um, and then uh, later, uh, an airline from the Netherlands also posted a, a, a tweet after their victory over Mexico that said basically, adios amigos. Um, caused a little bit of a stir with, with some people, but uh, I don't necessarily want to talk about the, the tweets themselves. I just want to talk about companies, businesses that are, are communicating off topic, off brand. Uh, you know, I don't know where an airline fits into soccer tweets other than it's great to show your, your pride in, in nationalism, but uh, what's your thoughts on businesses posting off topic? I suppose that in, in cases like this, you're, you're evaluating the, the benefit with the, um, the negative here. And, and I suppose the benefit is people think it's clever, they retweet it, maybe sure. it gets a few followers. The negative, in, in, in the case with like an adios amigo tweet like that, you get a pe bunch of people mad at you. Because, I mean, let's just face it, after the World Cup loss, that, you know, people aren't exactly in great moves, <laughs> and moods. So, you know, in, in general, we, we encourage people to mix up their tweets, you know. You don't just want to be pushing, uh, you know, sales, sales pitch, sales pitch. Sure, you want, you want to mix it up, but when you're mixing it up, um, you don't want to do anything that would be a negative. You sure. know, I, I think that, that you can have inspirational tweets, you can have maybe off-topic tweets on a, on a current event, but, uh, uh, you know, if it doesn't have any positive return for your business, I don't, uh, or if there's a potential negative return, sure. I don't see the problem. All right, I see the problem. Yeah, and, and you know what? What I was thinking when I saw these these tweets from these very large um, businesses and organizations is that um, when you make something like that, you're kind of speaking for everybody. So mm -hmm. you know whether whether you know working on the plane and someone says, you know, hey, I was really offended by that tweet you all made at the airlines. And, you know, if if I'm out there, you know, uh, serving a coke at, at you know thirty thousand feet, do, am I even really aware of what? Um, the rest of my organization tweeted out, which is where, where I get concerned. It's helpful if you stay on brand because your, your staff mm -hmm. is trained to understand your themes, and this, this way, hopefully, things stay consistent. Yeah, so take away from that, probably don't tweet about adios amigos <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, keep it to the brand. It's cool. All right. Um, so, folks, we, we do want to uh, let you know that during Buzz 101, we have our opinions, but we also would like to keep it open for, for any of, of you viewers. If you'd like to uh, comment on one of these things or, or if you have a question, we are uh, certainly open. We'd like to have it be a two-way street, not just us pushing stuff at you. We'd like some return as well. So you can connect with us here uh, via Twitter at, at Kutztown, that's K-U-T-Z Town, S-B-D-C. Um, or you can uh, you can shoot us an email at, at svdc at kutztown uh, edu um, because again while we have our own thoughts about these articles you know we, we'd like to social media is about a conversation and it's two ways so please interact with us um, and then we can uh, we can take any questions or, or, or hear any comments right and our producer Dorian will feed those to us um, in our segment at about 11:22 this morning we'll actually be able to uh, look at those comments and, and hopefully address some of them in one of those segments. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, back to, back to these 101 pieces. Um, there, there was a, an article I read recently that talked about uh, a restaurant, a long-established restaurant that uh, basically made a claim as filing a suit uh, against Google because it's claiming that uh, it lost about 75% of its business due to a Google Places listing that um, listed them basically closed on the weekends, probably their busiest time as a restaurant. Mm. Um, here's the interesting thing: Google didn't um, the, the restaurant, excuse me, did not create that Google Places um, account or ad. Um, all of a sudden, this just appeared, and um, I, I think it's something to, to think about if you haven't looked at what's being created for you in some of these social media spaces, where you might, as a business, be saying, "I don't need to be there." 
you should at least be looking and seeing what's happening because um, you don't know what's going on. So there's questions about whether or not the restaurant, maybe they did create this, but they created it incorrectly. Did a competitor sneak in and create this account mm -hmm. for them? Uh, did Google just go ahead and say, hey, this is a long-standing restaurant. They've been in our listings for a long time, so we'll just make one. I, I, we don't know. That's for, that's for courts to figure out. But my question is, do you really think something like a Google Places um, uh, posting has that much of an impact, on, especially in a business that's been around for a while? Oh, man, I tell you what, 75% decrease in, in sales seems a lot just for, for that um, that kind of listing, right? And and I think ultimately, you know, if you have if you serve a good product, people are pleased with it, you're going to get business, whether it's through word mm -hmm. of mouth or, or whether it's through phase, whatever you're doing. I mean, you mentioned a good point, you know, and part of it may be negligence on the company's point. You know, I think what, for stuff like that, you have to at least once a month check in, make sure everything's current. Um, you know, make sure every all your I mean stuff like hours seems seems pretty uh, pretty important mm -hmm. for for a business like that. And so I don't know I you know I don't know exactly I I when I want to go to a place I will Google and 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 check out the the uh, different restaurants in the area. But to say seventy five percent of of sales went down um, seems like pretty pretty uh, far stretch. Um, like yeah, that. well you know I I think about this as um, the, the tagline that we're, we're using for Buzz 101 is your customers are, are talking, are you listening? Mm -hmm. and, and I think a, the big point of this is social media, I think the hidden value in social media is the ability to listen. So you need to be actually going out there and looking and listening to see what's being posted about you, what are the reviews be, that, that, are, that are, are being posted. Whether you're participating in these spaces or not, the odds are your customers are actually saying something about you and it's your job uh, as a business owner, to be in that space. And yeah, let's be honest, they were they were in business probably before Google Places yeah, was was there. So think about what was working then. Maybe something else has changed yeah. um, instead. Good point. All right, um, this is something I, I is new to me. I or the the term is new to me, um, and and I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. I'm going to do my best. the The word is spelled F A U X FO. I think is mm -hmm. how it's pronounced. But um, there's there's this new generation, and they they kind of group the millennials in this sort of thing, um, of, of faux shoppers, mm -hmm. all right? And, and what a faux shopper is, and go to Urban, Urban Dictionary, yeah, right? there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the, the uh, industry standard for words that don't actually exist. <laughs> yes. But anyways, um, faux shoppers, it's a slang term used for people that put items into their electronic cart with ever, without ever actually buying them. <laughs> I don't know if you're guilty of doing this. Are. Probably, yeah. Probably. I, I, yeah, I've probably got a couple <laughs> items in there as well, so we're both faux shoppers. Um, Yet putting that item in the uh, the cart still gives them the similar feelings as if they had had bought them, or maybe they'll they'll post something on their Pinterest wall, you know, something along those lines. Um, so they call it faux consumerism, all right. And and thirteen hundred millennials were were polled, and and they're still into the the stuff and the prospect of attaining it, right? Mm. Problem is. They're too poor <laughs> to go do with the <laughs> transaction, um, and you know I can relate. Let's be honest. Um, I mean, so I guess the question is, and thinking about small businesses as well, um, how do you turn? Is there a way to turn these these window shoppers, these faux shoppers, into an actual paying customer, or is it kind of a lost cause with the, with these millennials? Yeah, you know I, I think it's really interesting when, when we think about millennials and, and just how these generations have changed. And there's so much information going on about. Millennials in the workplace and um, uh, the changing in, in consumption habits of, of not buying homes until later, not getting married until later, mm -hmm. um, not starting families until later. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're not, <laughs> guilty. Uh, yeah. But it, but it's really interesting to say how do now the, the the businesses and the retailers need to adjust to change to deal with their world that has 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 changed and it is changing immediately in front of them. And I, I think there's there's a lot of potential there. Um, to me, any time in this digital world that you do something, you click on something, you load a file, there's a, there's a breadcrumb. There's something there that, that that business owner can go back and look look mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. um, there's a ton of data. Whether or not you can do anything with it is where I think it's on the, the, the responsibility of the businesses to be able to be looking at those, those breadcrumbs to see, is there potential for me to go back to this person six months, a year from now, maybe offer them financing, do yeah. something to get this going. Right, I think there's a way... Uh, 
through Google Analytics, you can see yeah. where people clicked and when they when they made a purchase and when they didn't make a purchase. Yeah. You know? So if they get to a certain item and, and they don't make that purchase, you have, you have access to that data, and you know that's that's a uh, something to think about when you're would with your product. Price points, yes. stuff like that. Yeah, but again, point. yeah, is there a way to reach this customer later down the road? Yeah, or, or do you need to just change your product line to say, you know what, we, we just have something that right. um, a, a large portion of our customers can attain? That's, that's a great point. Good. So again, uh, I just want to remind you we're getting really close to that uh, 1122 time where we will uh, address uh, hopefully one of the questions or comments that, that you all might have. So we're here, we're available, and, and that's part of the, the the feature of Buzz 101 is it's not just us talking at you, it's it's the ability for you all to actually influence what we talk about mm -hmm. and uh, we have a segment at 1122 um, where we're going to actually take uh, questions or comments um, that you might have. So if you, if you have a chance, if you have something you want to say or share, just connect with us. You can tweet us at Kutztown SBDC uh, via Twitter or you can also just send us a, an old school email um, at sbdc at kutztown.edu. Um, and, and even for us, something really interesting for us, we're trying this the first time, is if you have a second and you, ha and you have been watching, comment to us. Let us know, how are you watching this? Are you watching it on your PC? Mm -hmm. Are you watching it on a tablet? Are you watching it on a smartphone? Because part of the reason we went to this media is, is to change with that audience, like we were right. just talking about with the right. photo shoppers. So we're going to bring you content wherever you're at in whatever format you need. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Mike, I, I think you got another one. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm sure a lot of you are, are aware of, of Kickstarter. And, and essentially what Kickstarter is, is, is folks can propose, a, it can be a business, it can be a, a product, it can be, a, I have a bunch of film friends, I have mm -hmm. film backgrounds. If, if they want to fund a film, they can post something on there. Um, and essentially, they're, they're asking the general public, they have a goal in mind, and they're asking the general public to help them fund these projects, right? And people do silly stuff. There was an article I read, a guy, he, he wanted to make a, he made it as a joke, he wanted to make potato salad, all right? And if if you donated a dollar, then he would say your name while he made the potato salad. Okay. If you donated five dollars, he would, uh, uh, if you donated 50 bucks, you could come over and try the potato salad. It was a joke. Yeah. The dude got $21,000 from, from random people. Um, so, uh, but we're going we're gonna to look at the business end. That was just an interesting <laughs> story. Google it, I'm not lying. Um, <laughs> So essentially, you can ask for a pledge, and then there are incentives for pledging. Mm. So oftentimes, if you have a film Kickstarter, you'll get your name in the credits if you okay. donate a certain amount of money. Um, so I guess the question is, businesses, small businesses, you know, that, that may need a certain amount of startup funds, but they don't want to go for a loan, or they don't yeah. want to dive into their own pocket. So they're thinking about using uh, Kickstarter, go, basically going into the general public's pocket to, to help fund their business. Sure. What do you think about that? Is it ethical? Is it is it a, a viable source of funding? What's the thought? Yeah, you know, we we've seen even locally uh, several businesses that, that have had some stories in, in the local news that, that they've been successful getting funds this way. And uh, you know, I don't know that there's an ethical problem because the way Kickstarter is established is there's um, you give and you get. There, there's a there's a clear transaction happening. You know, whether it's Someone saying your name while they're making potato salad. I don't know if that's necessarily <laughs> worth a dollar, um, but for Probably some not. it might be. But but most of the time, there's other things you can get: hats, t-shirts, you know, right. names and credits, things like yeah. that. So there there is a clear exchange of value, which I, I think is great. And, and for businesses, to me, this is a great way to market initially, mm -hmm. um, but also to draw in those those people that might not have been uh, uh, been customers without you. You know. Instead of going to someone asking for a hundred thousand dollars, you go and you ask, you know, a thousand people for a hundred bucks, and, right. and I think it, it changes the game. And then when you do start that business, people feel really tied and connected right. to it. So I, I, I like it. Yeah, I mean, and and I should mention that that they do need to get approved by the site. How yes. the, how the potato salad guy did? Maybe not that joke. But anyways, you do need to get approved. So if it turns out that you do have adequate um, existing funds, you're not going to get approved for Kickstarter. But I mean, I'm sure if you're on, it's easy to share Kickstarter campaigns on other social media outlets as well. I see them on my newsfeed all the time. Yeah. So, but again, it generates interest before the business right. is out, rather than just having to start from from uh, uh, you know ground up ground up when you first open the doors. And, and you know, people feel good. They feel connected to it. I, so I, I think there's a, there's something behind it. You got it. Yep. All right. Um, one of the things that, that we like to talk about uh, each week here is is part of this this ongoing initiative that we have about crisis communication. So for businesses, when things are happening, 
Um, we're, we're, we're in the summertime now. There's been a, a lot of storms recently coming through. Um, locally, we just had a, a major hailstorm in, in the end of May that did tons of damage, uh, thousands of cars, mm -hmm. and, and uh, right. see what my, my roof is getting checked out this weekend, so we'll see where that comes yeah. out. Um, but it reminds us, you know, there's hurricanes spinning off the coast. There's, there's all these things happening um, that could cause some type of business disruption. And, and um, one of the things I want to talk to you about is should businesses have a plan or a policy in place in case something happens, um, a, a flood, uh, loss of power, you know, that, that's something major. But what if uh, key personnel leaves or, or is it incapacitated? That, that's also something that's happened locally. What's your thought about uh, taking the time to build a plan, have a policy in place, so in case something like this happens, uh, we, we've got something to, to go back to? Yeah, I mean, uh, one thought we were, we were kind of joking a little bit earlier is, you know, if, if a hurricane's coming coming through town and, and ripping your business apart, you're not going to take out your policy and be like, oh, okay, um, part 34 hurricanes, um, run, or like whatever <laughs> your, right, whatever your um, uh, plan is. No. However, I think it's good to have something in, in place, um, it, it, like you said, a key personnel in general for uh, mm -hmm. social media policy and procedures. Things like, you know, who is, should be posting on um, the wall? You know, how often right. should they be posting? If, if a tweet doesn't do well, who should, who, what's the damage control yeah. like? If, or how could someone get, um, uh, what's the punishment? Sure. Um, but I think, it, yeah, just in, in, in any crisis, and you know, I lived in Jersey for a year, Hurricane yeah. Sandy ripped yeah. a bunch of businesses in part, yeah. apart. I mean, you really should be thinking about, you know, where's the money, how am I going to live, essentially? Right. Where, am I gonna, yeah. where am I going to go? So I think to have, it's kind of like a, a, you hate for that things to happen, but if it does happen and you don't have any kind of plan, um, then you're kind of grasping at straws. So it's part instinct, I think, and part plan. Yeah, and I, and I think the plan kind of helps to maybe um, hone and direct that instinct so that, um, you know, when, when, when crisis happens, you know, chaos is pretty much instantly initiated. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of do go back to your, your, your roots, your sources, and, and therefore I think the planning process mm -hmm. can really help you to, uh, to get things together, organized, so that you, you have something right. to, to go on so that you're, you, the whole world is in chaos. You at least have some some section where you can go back to, um, and and have um, uh, at least a little bit of sanity during that that chaos period. Okay, cool. All right. Now um, we uh, uh, now is the time we have uh, for for viewer questions. Yes. Um, and it looks like uh, looks like we, we have a couple actually. So uh, let me let me take a look at at one of these right now. Uh, uh, we got a tweet uh, here um, that that we're going to address this one. Mm -hmm. Basically says. Um, could say ask BDC, what metrics can a small business owner use to measure tweeting success? And we're, you know, I'm throwing this right at you out of nowhere, but yeah, what, what do you think? Um, I mean, one one thing is is oftentimes uh, point of having uh, tweets or or Facebook posts is to drive traffic to the website um, to get um, more clicks on your website, especially if you're selling a product. Um, so I think one way you can measure Twitter success is by a, uh, website traffic increase. Okay. Another thing is is Simple things like uh, people retweeting it and, and favoring uh, favoriting a, oh, yeah, um, yeah. a tweet as well. Um, you, you know, you can see how what kind of tweets are working basically, um, and, and kind of put that in the in the memory bank. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think that um, th there's some good tools out there. That uh, what I'll try to do is I'll try to post some of these. I, I can't think of them all uh, offhand right now. Uh, but there's some nice tools out there that actually will analyze your past hundred tweets mm -hmm. and give you some background to say um, what's the engagement been like. And, and to me, the, the ultimate measure of, of anything marketing is people taking action. Right. Um, so whether that's uh, are they going to your website, are they making purchases? Um, and to me, that's kind of the, the thing that you need to measure. So you want to look at engagement. How many people are replying? How many people are favoriting? Um, right. So if you're sending out 10 right. tweets a day, what what's the what's the impact? What's the net activity mm -hmm. that that results from that? So and uh, yeah, we just got a, a question in from uh, James and Mark. Um, is it says uh, it's in reference to the Kickstarter sure. um, article. It says, do you know many companies that have been able to successfully follow through on Kickstarter campaigns? There have been a few big companies that haven't been able to deliver, mm -hmm. while some others have launched some really cool products. Uh, your thoughts? Do you have any uh, uh, thoughts on this one, Peter? Yeah, um, I, I think it's. It, I think it still comes back to um, planning. Um, you know, I think it's a great resource to say, "Hey, I'm going to put this out there and potentially, you know, get some funding to do this business." But you're still running a business, so you should still have some kind of plan that relates to all of this stuff. 
Um, and there's stories out there where people got funding um, and, and they went out and they produced, uh, I, I know there's one that somebody produced board games, you know, mm. thousands of these mm. things. Um, in shipment, a bunch of them got destroyed and this guy wound up having all of these commitments that he had to meet. Mm -hmm. But basically his product was destroyed, did go through the process of, of insuring things the right way, and wound up losing a bunch of money because he still had to fulfill those commitments. Um, so I, I still think it comes back to the plan and, and having things organized to say, it, it's not just a request for money. It's a request for money to fulfill the 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 plan that's behind to, to run this as an ongoing yeah. business concern. It, it goes to that a, a kind of essential question of starting a business. What's the pro Is there a problem in the marketplace and do I have a solution? Is If there's a need and, and the general public sees that there's a need, I mean, it could be a perceived need. Like, do I need to have a gourmet cupcake? You know, in downtown downtown Reading, maybe not, but a lot of people would love to have cupcakes. So, um, I feel like if you have um, uh, a creative, usually a creative business or a creative film idea or a creative product, people are going to get behind it. You know, and and if you're passionate about it, I think it's a it's a viable thing. All right, we've got a couple more minutes, but you think we can squeeze one more viewer question in today? Yeah, why not? All right, we're gonna take this one from a Kelly. Uh, she says, she tweets to us, hey, Kutztown SBDC, question. How can businesses track these faux shoppers that you were talking about and try to remarket to them? Any, any thoughts on how that happens? Uh, let's see. How can they track the faux shoppers? I mean, they, how to market to them? I mean, the millennials, we're always on technology. Yep. You know what I mean? Whether it's, it's the Internet or, or Facebook or, or, or Twitter or anything like that. I mean, I, I think there's, there's analytics out yep. there that you can track these faux shoppers. Yep. Um, I don't, it depends on what people are interested in. I know Google Analytics is a powerful one. Because, again, essentially you can see, all right, this, person, this faux shopper got to this page, looked at this item, and then didn't buy yep. it. Okay, so I think that's one of the best ways to, to, to measure these metrics. Yes. Um, what do you think? I, you know, I think it goes back to, again, the, the tagline, your customers are talking, right? So you were talking about how they're, they're putting these things on Pinterest and they're saying, mm -hmm. this is where you, ha you, as a business, listen. So, um, you know, go out, look for your products, look for your services in, in these spaces and places, whether it's Instagram, um, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, or, or Pinterest particularly, when we're getting down to retail establishments, are people putting these pictures up there for you? And, and there's ways to look for this stuff. There are um, reverse image lookups. Uh, there's, a, there's a site, I believe it's called Tina, mm -hmm. where you can actually go in and, and, and put in a, pic a picture and find out who else is using this picture anywhere on the internet. It's a great resource to find. Did someone pin right. you know, my jacket, my shirt, my boots? And then I can figure out what else are they looking for? What else is in their, their, their mindset so I can market yeah. to them? One other thought, I mean, <sighs> Millennials or anyone, faux shoppers, I don't care who that. They love free stuff. So if you can give something to That's them, a either a, a discount or or uh, you know something for free, give the, give them something, and then they they see that they like the product, they, they try it, it or they, if they get some kind of discount, faux shoppers all of a sudden say, you know what, I may be poor, I may be broke, but <laughs> for fifteen percent off, I'm not that not broke. That poor. <laughs> <laughs> so just another thought. Uh, of maybe what you can do to, to convert those faux shoppers into, uh, into paying customers. All right. Well, we've just got uh, a couple minutes left here. We're, we're going to wrap up, but uh, we want to thank everybody for, for questions and comments. Mm -hmm. Again, thank remember, you. we'll be back here every Friday, 11 a.m. to uh, do the same kind of thing. And uh, please share your comments. This will be automatically archived, so if you have comments or want to continue the conversation, Continue to tweet us, email us, or, or engage with us uh, via any social media, and we'll, we'll still be around. Right, and I, and I think just one of the ultimate takeaways, and, and this is just been a, been a business in general. People make mistakes, okay? And and how are you going to learn? How are you going to how are you going to make your business better by making those mistakes? Yeah. And I think you learn more from your mistakes than you do your failures. So whether it's a rogue tweet or you know it's, it's something along those lines, um, just just. You take it, take it to a, make it, make it a positive. Is what I'm trying to say, rather than rather than dwelling on the yeah. fact that it's a mistake. Yeah, and again, understand business is fluid. Um, things happen. Things go up and down. Um, it's really about how you respond to everything, and not necessarily how you how you handle that initial spot. It's a, it's about the, the long term. So play this game long term, and uh, I, I think that there's success out there. So again, join us uh, next, next week, week and yeah, all the coming week. weeks. Uh, Kutztownsbdc.org/tv. Um, this will be archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash KUSBDCTV. All right, and thank you for tuning in to Buzz 101. I just made that up. Is that good? <laughs>